Let's talk more Indians baseball now. Indians beat reporter for WTAM, Nick Camino, joins us. Nick has worked, what, 15, 16 hours oh today? Gosh, a long day. <laughs> on long the radio, day. I mean, you must have answered every phone call I think I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, five hours you'll have that. Uh, you were pretty adamant today about why did they start this game. Yeah, I just felt like this was a situation where you didn't have to start this game. You really didn't have to because you don't know what's going to happen with your starting pitchers. You saw on Tuesday night when Justin Masterson went out there. Oh, I saw. I was there till 4 in the morning. <laughs> I remember that. 3 in the morning. After a couple, I, you walked in late. I said, what are you doing Ninth here? inning. I said, I'm going to stick around for this thing. But I, when they started this game today, I said, why would you do this after seeing what happened on Tuesday night with Justin Masterson where you were forced to bring in Chad Durbin in just the third inning? Now, Chad did come in, did a nice job through three scoreless innings, and the bullpen ended up going 12 scoreless innings. As, as Andy knows, that game went 14 innings. But there was no reason to start that game today because you just don't know. If that game ends up starting back up, you're not going to have David Huff, who was perfect through two innings. Blame the umpires. <laughs> well, it was in their hands. Go ahead. Yeah. What kind of changes, though, when you start looking at the, as we're getting into September, you're gonna, we're going to get into September call-ups, but... Chisenhall, is he, is he the lockdown third baseman? Is that him? And we've seen Hanahan play third. We've seen him play first. Is that the way it's going to be? These defensive replacements are going to be throughout the year? Yeah, Jack Hanahan seems to be like the forgotten guy on this team now because he did Wait, play. He's still on the roster? <laughs> <laughs> he did play so well defensively over at third base for so long. I would say next to Adrian Beltre, he's the best defensive third baseman uh, in the American League. He's done a nice job, but he's kind of been the forgotten guy because Chisenhall has come up. I do think, Mike, you're going to see Jack come in be the defensive specialist. You saw him get in against the Twins the other night over at third base. So he'll play third. He'll play first. Manny Acton made a good joke a couple of weeks ago. He said, Jack Hanahan is almost so good defensively, I don't want to put him at first base. But yeah, you'll see him go into that role, third base, first base replacement. But yeah, he's been, he's been a surprise uh, with his glove. Hey, Jason Kipnis missed today's game about the only person that could stop him from being hot is himself. <laughs> so he's got a strain on his side, right? Yeah. And what do we think about that? What also Michael Brantley is another situation. Well, both of them we're going to find out on Tuesday in Chicago. That's when they're going to be assessed. Michael Brantley, the wrist, don't know if he's coming back. Manny Acta said himself, if he's not ready to go by Tuesday, that's a disabled list situation. With Kipnis, he's a guy that right now, you mentioned the sore side. He's going to be a guy that they assess on Tuesday in Chicago as well. If he's not ready to go, you could be looking at another DL situation. And it's not good. You just traded a lot of guys in the farm system to get Ubaldo Jimenez. And so it's flat out. You just don't have the depth right now at AAA Columbus. Are the Tribe kind of on a roll right now? I mean, they win the series against the Tigers. Obviously, they took the first two against the Twins. Are they, have they turned the corner? Yeah, I think so. I think that they've played well of late. They've won four of five. It looked like they were on their way to a victory today, Mike. And I think that even just watching the Orioles hold on to beat the Detroit Tigers today. <laughs> hold on. I mean, they give up four runs in the ninth. I know. I, I, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Yesterday, they were up five to nothing, and they can't hold right. on. I think Jeremy Guthrie looked up at the scoreboard, and he said, wait a minute. I think I'm helping the Indians out here. Let me turn around and screw this up. But no, I think uh, I think that the Orioles, you know, that win themselves, because the Indians have watched all three of those games. You better believe they were in the clubhouse watching that during the rain delay. So I think that will give them a little extra boost. They didn't play a game today, and they picked up a half game. All right, last question for you. Every time it looks like the Indians are about to go down the drain, they don't. I, I, I don't know if that's Manny Acto. What do you, I, I mean, it's, it's very impressive because you were like, ah, see, oh, no, season's not over yet. <laughs> I think it's a resilient ball club, and I think you hit it on the head, Andy. I think that Manny Acto is a big reason why they are that way, why they've played so well at times where you think they're just going to fade out. But, yeah, I, I think that they're in it until the end. I really do. The, the Detroit Tigers have proven that when Justin Verlander's not on the mound, they are a very beatable team. So I think it's going to take us down to the bitter end, and hopefully the Indians end up on top and in the playoffs. All right, go home. We're going to hear you, what, 4 o'clock in the morning now? Yeah, in for Mike Snyder tomorrow. So All right, good. listen to him on WTA.